In this video, we're going to enter one of the first famous programs for the Altair called Kill the Bit. We're going to enter that through the front panel and then uh, verify we've entered it correctly and run it. And just get used to that process. That same process will be used to enter bootloaders later to load BASIC, for example. All right, let's go ahead and fire up this computer. Give it a hard reset. We're at location zero. And the Kill the Bits program is entered at location zero. Now, the better follow along, there is support material available. It's actually a listing of this program and all the op octal um, bytes to be put in um, available on the Altair clone website. So if you came from the Altair clone website and followed the link for this video, you'll see a support link uh, with this video. If you came directly from YouTube, if you look below the video and expand the, uh, the arrows below video, you'll see a more information section in which you can get the uh, PDF file we're talking about. So if you haven't done that, go ahead and stop the video. You might want to pull that up on your screen or actually print it out so you can see what we're doing. All right, well, I'm looking at that printout, and I have an octal dump in front of me, and I'm going to put that program in through the front panel. I tend to do things two bytes at a time, just so I don't have to look back and forth quite as often. So the first two bytes, starting at location 0, are octal 41 and 0. So I'll put in a 41 and deposit that into location 0, and then a 0 goes into the next location. Next two bytes are 0 and 26. 26. Next two bytes, 200 and a 1. 200 and 1. Next two bytes, 16 and 0. 16, 0. Next two bytes, 32, 32. 32, 32. Next two bytes are also 32. 32, 32. Next two bytes, 11 and 322. 11, 322. Next two bytes, 10 and 0. 10 and 0. Next two bytes, 333, 377. 333 and 377. Next two bytes, 252 and 17. 2, 5, 2, and 17. Next two bytes, 127, 303. 1, 2, 7, and 303. And finally, 10 and 0. 10 and 0. All right, so the program's all entered. Now the next step will be to verify that it was entered correctly. So let's go back, examine memory location 0, and start. Should be a 41 and a 0. 41, examine next, 0. Then we should have a 0 and a 26. We should have a 200 and then a 1. There's 200, there's our 1. 16 and a 0. 16 and 0. Now we should have four 32s in a row. There's one of them, two, three, four. All right, then an 11 and a 322. There's 11, there's 322. And then a 10 and a 0. 10 and 0. 333, 377. 333, 377. 252 and 17. 252, 17, looks good. 127 and 303. 303, and then finally 10 and 0. All right, so it looks like we entered that program correctly. Now we can run it. We want to run from address 0, so I'll examine location 0. This program wants all the address switches, well, specifically A15 to A8 in 0, because this program is going to read it. So we can run it. All right, so that's the kill the bit program running. The bit we want to kill is that light going round and round on those first 8 bits. These lower lights are actually the program running. Those are the address of the uh, executable code. The object of this game is to try to flick one of these switches quickly as the light goes by. If you can do that, you'll kill the bit. So let's try it. I'm right-handed, so this is going to be hard. Okay, I missed, so it actually gave me more bits to kill now. And I got rid of one of them. There, got them all. All right, so did the program stop or why is it off? Well, the program turned the lights off because you got all the bits, 
But see, we're not on weight. We're still, we're still actually running. How would you start this program over? Well, one way is to hit stop and then go ahead and reset to zero. Or if you want to do it the official way, and then hit run, the program starts over. All right, so let's go ahead and try to kill this bit again. All right, killed the bit. Program is still running. If you raise reset while the program is running, it sets the program counter to zero and then allows the, pro the processor to immediately begin running again. So if I do this, you see that it started all over again from zero. So that's kind of a quick way to start a program over that begins at address zero. All right, so one thing you may wonder looking at this is how is he getting that light to go zipping across A15 to A8? There is no way a program can write to the lights on the Altair. So how was it done? Well, those lights are truly still just showing us the address bus. What the author of this program did was in his loop control how many times he accessed address that made A15 come on, and then the address that makes A14 come on, and then the address that makes A13 come on, all in his program. Now he's accessing those addresses, he doesn't care what he gets there, but because he accesses that address, the light comes on. Very good trick, and then after this guy's program, a number of people would use that trick to display status information in the upper bits of the um, address. Now of course later on, those upper bits became real memory, and so this trick wasn't that useful anymore. But back when you only had 1K or 256 bytes, those upper bytes of address were all fair game. So anyway, one of the first programs, kind of a famous program for the Altair, Kill the Bits. Now the computer used in the demonstration today is actually an Altair 8800 clone computer. This computer accurately duplicates the look and feel uh, the features, performance, and the limitations of the real Altair 8800. But it does it with modern hardware on the inside so that you don't have to worry about damaging a collector's quality or museum quality piece of equipment. It also makes the computer more reliable and more affordable so that you can just get your hands dirty and enjoy this period of time in computing without having to worry about damaging something that's going to be important. Be sure to visit AltairClone.com to learn more about this great computer.